Assalamualaikum I am Tala Suhail I welcome you all to virtual universities program on personality psychology Dear students today is our lecture number 36 and in this 36th lecture we will be talking about Skinner's theory of personality Janab ek nayi theory ke shuru karenge aapke sath ek bahut interesting theory This theory is basically going to interest you a lot because it's based again on stimulus response Number two, it focuses on observable behavior. Number three, there is a lot of talk going to be on reinforcements, the concept of positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, the concept of extinction or punishment. We'll be talking about schedules of reinforcement. किस तरह मुख्तलिफ schedules इस्तेमाल किए जाते होंगे? to increase a frequency of behavior or to decrease a frequency of behavior we'll talk about applications of this theory and the applications are varied and multiple in different fields related to education related to personality related to diagnosing or improving maladaptive behavior so we'll talk about that as well uske baad समरी डिस्कस करेंगे अवेलुएट करेंगे और टू अ सर्टन एक्सटेंट कंपेयर इट विद अदर थेरी एज वेल बट बिफोर बिगनिंग विद दिस न्यू फैबुलस स्किनर्स थेरी ऑफ पर्सनैलिटी लेट अस रीकैप व्हाट वी डिड इन लेक्चर नंबर 35। जनाब लेक्चर नंबर 35 में वी कंप्लीटेड एंड फिनिश डॉलर एंड मिलर स्टूमुलस रिस्पॉन्स थेरी इस थेरी में हमारा फोकस था ऑन स्टूमुलस रिस्पॉन्स कनेक्शन वी सेड दैट इट वाज डॉलर एंड मिलर हु फोकस्ड ऑन स्टडिंग हैबिट्स बिकॉज हैबिट्स आर द की कॉन्सेप्ट इन देयर थ्योरेटिकल सिस्टम एंड हैबिट्स रिप्रेजेंट वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग बॉन्ड और कनेक्शन बिटवीन स्टूमुलस एंड रिस्पॉन्स देर इज अ स्टूमुलस एंड यू रिस्पॉन्ड टू इट and all learning according to dollard and miller takes place because of this stimulus response so all the stimuli all the agents or forces in the environment individual reacts or responds to these forces and as a result of that his overt observable behavior is formed so mind you all of our personality development all our habits are formed as a result of this very strong bond or connection between stimulus and response yani aapko kya cheeze khane mein pasand hai kapde aap kis rang ke pehanna pasand karte hain kin logon se aap dosti karna pasand karte hain all of these things are formed simply using stimulus response connection or association now a school of thought called behaviorism focuses on studying overt behavior of an individual observable behavior of an individual so it was basically dollard and miller who focused on stimulus response connection and it was through their very extensive laboratory work on organisms and laboratory rats then they carried on experiments on them and they formulated their theory janab jab humne aapke sath ye theory ki thi to we extensively went through the core concepts of the theory which were the structure of personality the dynamics of personality the development of personality which included inner equipment the learning process secondary drive and the learning process higher mental processes critical stages of development the social context applications of the model unconscious processes conflict psychotherapy research summary and evaluation 
Dear students, we discussed at length with you Dollard and Miller's stimulus response theory where the key concept is habit certainly and habit focuses connection between stimulus that is a cue and a response to that stimulus. So basically all SR connections, all SR associations are studied under the heading of habit and this phenomena was extensively explored by Dollard and Miller. Or ye baat ek, it's established fact that our preferences for certain clothes, our preferences for certain foods, our preferences for certain persons without knowing it are based on simple stimulus response connections. So according to Dollard and Miller, all our observable behavior can be studied taking into account simple stimulus response association or connection. So that is as far as our uh, stimulus response theory is concerned. Now let us begin with a very interesting theory which was given by Skinner, Skinner's theory of personality. Now it was basically radical behaviorism. Radical behaviorism is the brand of psychology that popularly is taken as synonymous with Skinner's name. So wherever there is Skinner's name, we take the brand label radical behaviorism. Now what does this radical behaviorism mean? Ye jo hum baat karein ke Skinner ka naam jab bhi liya jayega, उसके साथ ही एक ब्रांड ऑफ साइकोलॉजी सामने आती है जिसको आप कहते हैं रेडिकल बिहेवियरिज्म तो डियर स्टूडेंट्स व्हाट इज दिस रेडिकल बिहेवियरिज्म अकॉर्डिंग टू स्किनर रेडिकल बिहेवियरिज्म मींस दैट वी शुड नॉट कंसंट्रेट एंड स्टडी बिहेवियर रिलेटेड टू इनर स्टेट्स लाइक आई से आई हैव एंजाइटी आई हैव गिल्ट नाउ दीस आर द इनर स्टेट्स so instead of describing behavior by using these inner states that is totally rejected by Skinner. Skinner focuses only on avert, observable behavior of an individual. So for Skinner, all what is observable, all what is seen is behavior. And all those inner states of an individual which we cannot see do not exist for him and they should not be taken into account giving the cause of a particular behavior. Let's take an example. Suppose you are not very comfortable in social gatherings. Aapko jitni bhi social gatherings hai, aap wahan pe comfortable nahi hote, aap wahan jana pasand nahi karte. And today you are invited to a party. Now, you prepare yourself for the party, you take out your dress, you begin to look after it and you dress up, you take a bath, you dress up, you prepare yourself for the party. But as the party time is approaching, you are becoming very tense, you are becoming very uncomfortable. So what you do? You decide not to go to the party. You avoided the party because you are anxious. So we say you avoided the party because you are anxious. Now for Skinner, such an explanation is not valid. Jab hum kehre ke you were preparing to go to the party, but as the party time approached, you became very nervous, tense, and you avoided going to the party. So we say it was your anxiety, your anxious behavior, which avoided you, which somehow inhibited you to, to go to the party. For Skinner, it's something else. For Skinner, it is the consequence. It is the result of a particular behavior that generates a condition. For example, it changes, your behavior changes because of the aversive contingency, because of the aversive reinforcement, which generates a condition within you, which we label anxiety. So, 
your previous experiences of going to the party generated aversive contingency negatively reinforced you that led to a condition felt as anxiety so aap keh sakte hain ki jo aapki inner state hai it is because of a consequence it is because of something and this consequence somehow it reinforces you not to go to social gatherings dear students we are talking to you about skinner's brand of psychology radical behaviorism aur hum aap se baat kar rahe hain usme ek misal ke sath that you are invited to a party and you do not go to the, to the party you avoid it and you label this behavior as anxiety let's take another example you rush into a building which is on fire to save people from dying alive it is not because you are heroic or supreme but because you have a history of exposure to reinforcements in similar situations so there is another example that you rush and run into a building which is on fire to save people who are dying now you do this you want to be heroic or you want to perform some supreme acts no you are doing this particular behavior because in the past for such behavior you have been reinforced you have been rewarded so you the frequency of a particular behavior is going to increase if it's rewarded a frequency of a behavior is going to be decreased if it's not rewarded if it's not reinforced rather if it's punished uski frequency kam ho jayegi so in the first example where you you where you were invited to a party and you did not go you avoided it because you have not been reinforced so your behavior and its frequency of going to a party decreased because there was no reinforcement no reward positive or negative no reward was there for this particular behavior to be reinforced or increased now for this particular behavior where you rush into a building which is on fire and you do it because you have been reinforced positively or negatively so it's the frequency of a particular behavior increases because of a consequence aur agar us consequence ko reward kiya jaye to uski frequency badh jayegi aur agar use reinforce ya reward na kiya jaye to uski frequency kam ho jaye now that is skinner's radical behaviorism dear students behaviorism is a school of thought iske upar hum pehle bhi baat kar chuke ke behavioristics are talking about focusing only on observable overt behavior of an individual and ignoring the covert or inner states of an individual so for behaviorist all behavior of an individual which is observable which is seen should be taken into account yani wo sari behavioral states jo nazar aati hain jo observable hain उनको तो वी शुड टेक इन टू अकाउंट बट द इनर स्टेट शुड बी इग्नोर्ड नाउ बिहेवियर आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टू टाइप्स ऑफ लर्निंग क्लासिकल और रिस्पॉन्डेंट कंडीशनिंग इंस्ट्रोमेंटल और ऑपरेंट कंडीशनिंग जनाब बात आपसे बड़ी डिटेल में रहेगी क्लासिकल और रिस्पॉन्डेंट कंडीशनिंग या लर्निंग की जिसमें मेन focus and work has been by pavlov and watson and when we are talking about operant or instrumental conditioning well dear students main bulk of work has been done by thorndike and then no one else but skinner skinner is labeled as an experimental psychologist 
His major work has been on carrying out experiments on animals, particularly pigeons and rats, and he discovered the phenomena of operant conditioning. He focused on operant conditioning and he used different schedules of reinforcement. और जब हम शेड्यूल्स ऑफ री एनफोर्समेंट की बात करेंगे तो आप देखेंगे दिस दिस इज समथिंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड विच इज बीइंग यूज्ड माइंड यू बाय योर पेरेंट्स बाय योर टीचर्स बाय बाय आर एम्प्लॉयर्स टू इंप्रूव आर परफॉर्मेंस टू बेटर द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ डिजायर्ड बिहेवियर्स एंड टू चेक द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द अनडिजायर्ड बिहेवियर्स so we'll be talking about the role of reinforcements we'll talk about what is extinction we'll talk about what is stimulus generalization what is stimulus discrimination we'll discuss them in detail let's have a list of the core concepts we'll go through first of all we'll go through a biographical sketch of skinner number 2 we'll go through classical conditioning number 3 operant conditioning number 4 schedules of reinforcement number 5 techniques of treatment number 6 applications of the theory number 7 summary and number 8 evaluation janab aap se baat aaj rahegi bahut hi interesting topic ke upar radical behaviorism ke upar but before talking about that we should know that when we are talking about behaviorism the focus is on two things classical conditioning number 2 operant conditioning dear students in classical conditioning it's based on stimulus response connection there is a stimulus and you respond to it so stronger the connection between stimulus and response most sound classical conditioning or response will be there on the other hand in operant conditioning the individual or organism operates on the environment and as a result of this operation as a result of this operating function changes it to a certain ex- extent so we say that a behavior if we want to increase the frequency of a behavior we have to reinforce it for example a child brings in a report card with an a if we want the frequency of this behavior that is bringing home a result card with a should be increased and maintained we have to reward it if this behavior is not rewarded the frequency of bringing home a result card with a is going to decrease because this behavior has not been reinforced so for skinner it's important that behavior should be reinforced that behavior which is desirable should be reinforced that behavior which is undesirable should not be reinforced ek behavior jisme bachcha a grade leke result card la raha we want to reinforce this behavior so that the frequency of this behavior should increase so positive reinforcement reward is there on the other hand we want a behavior undesirable behavior to decrease so a child is using abusive language dirty language well the child has to be punished or no reinforcement no reinforcement will make this response ex- extinguish or punishment is going to make this response extinguish so in both the cases the frequency of undesirable behavior will decrease so for 
Skinner, if we want the frequency of a behavior to increase, we should reinforce it. And if we want the frequency of a behavior to decrease, we should use extinction or we should use the punishment principle or aversive stimulus. Positive reinforcement kya hai? Negative reinforcement kya hai? Extinction kya hai? Punishment kya hai? Aversive stimulus kya hai? We'll be talking about all of these concepts in detail. But first, let us go through a biographical sketch of Skinner. The son of a small town lawyer, Skinner was born in 1904 and was raised in a small town of Pennsylvania in a warm, stable family setting. It is interesting to note that the inventor of the Skinner box, the baby box, and various teaching machines observes in regard to his childhood. I was always building things. I built roller skates, scooters, steerable wagons, sledges, rafts, to be pulled about on shallow ponds. I made seesaw, merry-go-rounds and slides. I made slingshots, bows and arrows and guns and water pistols from bamboos. And I used water boiler as a steam cannon with which I could shoot plugs of potato and carrots over the houses of our neighbors. I made tops, model aeroplanes driven by twister rubber bands, boxes, kites, tin propellers which could be sent high into the air with a spool and string spinner. I tried again and again to make a glider in which I myself might fly. Now this could give you an idea that he had a mechanical instinct within him. He created the Skinner box, he invented the baby box and then see in his childhood he invented so many things and he had this dream of making a big propeller in which he could one day fly. Now initially he began studying English so his major subject was English not psychology and he did his major in English and then he even tried to write some poems and short stories. And he sent these short stories and poems for evaluation to Robert Frost. Yes, the famous poet Robert Frost. And he sort of recommended him that these were good uh, short stories and she, he should practice more. Now for a year or two, Skinner worked hard and he tried to write certain things. But he labels these years when he was trying to pick up his career as a writer as very unproductive. So he gave up the profession of writing and he joined psychology. And it is over here that we see a major shift. As an undergraduate, he attended Hamilton College where he majored in English and determined to become a writer. Encouraged in many ways, including a letter from Robert Frost, appraising three of Skinner's short stories, he decided to spend a year or two in full-time literary endeavor while living at home. This period turned out to be relatively unproductive and following a brief interval in Greenwich Village and Europe, he gave up writing and turned to Harvard and psychology. Although Skinner abandoned a career in writing, he did not give up his interest in literature as a number of his subsequent articles testify. At this time, Harvard was a stimulating setting for a young psychologist. Skinner had significant encounters with E.G. Boring, Carol Pratt, and Henry A. Murray. Skinner received his PhD in 1931 and spent five postdoctoral years working in laboratory at Harvard. His first academic position was at the University of Minnesota where he moved in 1936. The nine subsequent years at Minnesota were remarkably productive and established Skinner as the major experimental psychologist of his time. During this period of intense scientific activity, he found time to write a novel, Walden II. 
which described the evolution of an experimental society based on psychological principles. Dear students, we see that soon Skinner discovered that he was not to succeed as a writer, so he gave up his uh, interest in writing and went to Harvard and took up studying psychology. And after doing his PhD, he joined the Minnesota University and it was during here that he excelled as an experimental psychologist. And it was over here that he had time to write a novel, Walden II, which is based on applying all psychological learning principles uh, on a society. Now, basically this novel, which is Walden II, gives us an idea what Skinner is talking about, applying the learning principles on a society and how it can be used. Janab, ye jo saal the uske Harvard University mein, he had opportunity to meet Boring, Pratt, and later it was uh, basically Henry Murray. So he had interest in psychology. Now he did his PhD and then he joined Minnesota University and it was here that he worked hard in his laboratory and he established his reputation as an experimental psychologist. Now he received a number of awards for his contributions. Skinner was accorded many honors including the Distinguished Scientific Award of the American Psychological Association, membership in the National Academy of Sciences, the Gold Medal Award of the American Psychological Foundation, serving as William James Lecturer at Harvard and received the President's Medal of Science. B.F. Skinner died of leukemia on August 18, 1990 only eight days after receiving the award of the American Psychological Association for outstanding lifetime contribution to psychology. Dear students, we see that he lived to a ripe age, but he developed leukemia, and it was due to leukemia that he died in 1990. Now, he died just few days after receiving his lifetime contribution award from American Psychological Association. He had a very illustrious career. He received a number of honors. He was established as an experimental psychologist. His reputation was established within his life. Number two, he even had time to write some uh, literary works like his novel Walden II. Now, he also wrote some other books as well. Number one, Walden. Number two, The Behavior of Organisms in 1938. Number three, Science and Human Behavior in 1953. Number four, Verbal Behavior 1957. Number five, A Collection of Papers Entitled Cumulative Record in 1961. Number six, The Technology of Teaching in 1968 detailed his approach to learning in school setting. Number seven, Contingencies of Reinforcement, 1969. And number eight, Beyond Freedom and Dignity, 1971, probably his most controversial book. Number nine, Skinner published a three-volume autobiography. Dear students, we see a huge number of books, including a novel, Walden II, his autobiography in three volumes, and then a number of books and papers related to his academic work, his experimental work related to his radical behaviorism. Now, see, we, see, we, we began talking about his career, that he did his majors in English, and he wanted to become a writer. He even wrote three short stories, but somehow thought that he was not successful in it. So he gave up his writing and he joined Harvard and began studying psychology. But we see Walden II coming around and then his autobiography. 
एंड देन अज नंबर ऑफ बुक्स रिलेटेड टू साइकोलॉजी रिलेटेड टू डिफरेंट एरियाज ऑफ साइकोलॉजी पब्लिश बाय हिम विच शोज दैट बेसिकली ही वॉज अ गुड राइटर एंड ही हैड एन एप्टीट्यूड फॉर राइटिंग एज वेल Now let us begin talking about classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Jana classical conditioning kisne di kya hai and what does it focuses on? Classical conditioning it is credited primarily to two early leaders in the study of behavioral modification, Ian Pavlov and Watson. Pavlov discovered the principle of reinforcement as it applies to classical conditioning. It can be illustrated with a famous example. Suppose that on a number of occasions a bell is sounded in the presence of a hungry dog and suppose that on each of these occasions the sound of a bell is immediately followed by presentation of meat to the dog. What do we observe? On each presentation of the bell and the meat combination the dog salivates. but at first the dog salivates only when the meat is presented and not before thus the presentation of meat is a reinforcing operation it strengthens the likelihood that this salivation response will occur when bell is sounded on a later occasion furthermore because its presentation increases the chances of salivation it is classified as a positive reinforcer conditioning is most effectively carried on when reinforcement follows the conditioned stimulus regardless whether the response has occurred or not reinforcement is reward which can be materialistic symbolic positive or negative stimulus response connection is similar to dollard and miller's theory a last personality theory was the one which was focused on it as well see the connection between them Dear students, we are talking about classical conditioning. हमने आपसे ये कहा कि classical conditioning concept was given by Pavlov and Watson. They are the major contributors in the area of classical conditioning. Now, it was Pavlov who, through his classical experiment, demonstrated it. Meat powder presented to the dog, and the dog would salivate. on a repeated number of occasions that is meat powder presented to the dog and the dog would salivate so meat was the unconditioned stimulus leading to unconditioned response salivation in the dog once this sr connection is established that is meat powder and salivation so sr connection was established now we see there's another important thing was added unconditioned stimulus that is with meat a conditioned stimulus bell was added so unconditioned stimulus when paired with bell conditioned stimulus led to salivation so on a number of occasions this simultaneous presentation of meat with bell led to salivation meat was taken away just the bell and the dog would salivate so conditioned stimulus led to conditioned response salivation so it was over here that we observe classical conditioning respondent conditioning a special type of learning taking place according to pavlov this was classical conditioning and this was accidentally discovered by him following the development of a strong conditioned response an experimenter might wish to see what happens when the conditioned stimulus is consistently presented without being followed by the reinforcement in the example we have just talked about the bell would be sounded but no meat would follow extinction is the decrease in responding that occurs when the reinforcement following the response no longer occurs so dear students we are talking about a special condition when bell is being sounded salivation is there but no meat is provided to the dog no meat powder is presented to the dog 
so what will happen on a if a number of such trials when bell is being sounded and the dog salivates but no meat powder is being presented this will lead to an extinction in the response no more with the sound of the bell the dog is going to salivate there is going to be no response so that is called extinction so agar aap chahte hain ki ek response ek stimulus hai usko response mila aur ye response cement ho so there should be reinforcement but if stimulus is there response is there no reinforcement this response is going to come down it will cease to exist first gradually it will decrease and then it will no more be there classical conditioning classical conditioning begins with sr associations in his experiment pavlov used the sr association between food and salivation he presented hungry dogs with meat powder stimulus and they salivated that is response please note this sr association existed without any conditioning from pavlov so we say that meat powder was presented and salivation in the dog but this was actually no conditioning this was occurring naturally that is when you put food in your mouth your mouth begins to salivate there is uh, no learning no conditioning involved in it but when this meat powder unconditioned stimulus led to unconditioned response salivation now when this unconditioned stimulus in step number 2 is paired with a conditioned stimulus bell it leads to a response on a number of occasions if unconditioned stimulus is presented simultaneously with a conditioned stimulus salivation will take place now in step number 4 it is just the conditioned stimulus just the bell which is leading to salivation which is leading to a response so meat powder is unconditioned stimulus and salivation is unconditioned response in the second step of the experiment pavlov paired unconditioned stimulus say meat with a conditioned stimulus say bell in the third step unconditioned stimulus meat was presented with conditioned stimulus bell on a number of occasions and salivation took place in the fourth step conditioned stimulus bell was sounded and the dog salivated so conditioning or sr connection between bell and salivation has been established dear students we are talking to you about sr connection and it was i it was pavlov who proved that stimulus response con- connection and association can be established a conditioned stimulus leads to a conditioned response the bell re- leading to salivation in dog once when one sr condition or association has been established it can be used to establish another sr association for example with the pavlov's bell if you use a green light with it and present it on a number of trials the dog will salivate whenever green light is presented this process of building one condition sr association on another is called second order conditioning so let us see what we mean by second order conditioning humne aapse ye kaha ke it was pavlov who developed the concept of classical conditioning where meat unconditioned stimulus paired with a bell that is conditioned stimulus simultaneous presentation of these two on a repeated number of trials led to a conditioned response so now it was just bell and its presentation led to the conditioned response salivation 
Now one SR connection or association has been built. On this already built SR connection, another SR connection can be developed as well. That is, the same dog can be conditioned to salivate on a green light. So, with the bell, present this green light and later just the green light and on a repeated number of trials, when green light is on, the dog will salivate. So, this is called second order conditioning. Dear students, we are talking to you about classical conditioning experiment by Pavlov. So, let us see and take some examples. Example, you see a spider, that is a stimulus. You jump and run away, that is a response. So, SR connection. Number two, you see an injured man bleeding, that is a stimulus. And you feel that you might faint, that is your response. Research suggests that you are not aware of the many SR associations that influence your behavior. Your preferences for food, clothing, music, books and friends are determined by SR connection. Dear students, we are talking to you about famous classical conditioning experiment by Ayn Pavlov. And we have said that it's a very important experiment because Ayn Pavlov used the SR connection. And once this SR connection is established, one SR connection can be used to develop another SR connection as we saw in second order conditioning. Then we have given you some examples. We have said that you see a spider, you jump and run away. So seeing a spider is a stimulus and you, your jumping and running away is the response. So Whenever you are going to see a spider, you'll, you'll, you'll run away. So that is a typical SR connection. You see an injured man and you, uh, you feel like you'll faint away. That is your response. So all of our preferences for food, for clothing, for books, for friends, for music, for all the things that we like, they are according to Pavlov and Watson. They are based on SR connections. Dear students, in our lecture number uh, 35, we discussed with you at length about stimulus response theory given to us by Dollard and Miller. Or we have detail in detail. Kiya. Now, in classical conditioning again, Classical conditioning is based on stimulus response association, stimulus response connection. हमें ये बात मालूम नहीं है कि हमें एक मक्सूस रंग के कपड़े क्यों पसंद हैं, एक मक्सूस खाने की चीजें क्यों पसंद हैं, कुछ किताबें शायरी की क्यों पसंद हैं, कोई एक खास किस्म की मौसीकी क्यों पसंद है? It is because of stimulus response connection or association. Or a special type of conditioning or learning due to which you have developed it. Now there's another type of learning, and that is given to us by Thorndike and Skinner, and that is called operant or instrumental conditioning. So let's see what is operant or instrumental conditioning. Skinner noted that there are some responses such as painting a picture or crossing a street, these seems to be spontaneous or voluntary. Skinner's use of the term operant, an operant is a response that operates on the environment and changes it. And the change in the environment affects the subsequent occurrence of the response. When an operant response is conditioned, it is essential that the reinforcer be presented after the occurrence of the response. Only in this way does the frequency of the response increases. Thorndike put hungry cats in puzzle boxes and to escape from puzzle boxes, thereby to receive a piece of meat or fish, they had to perform a series of actions. 
the cats soon learn what they have to do in order to get reward dear students we are talking to you about skinner's theory of personality aur humne aapse ye kaha ke the second type of learning is called instrumental or operant conditioning or operant learning now the word operant means operating on the environment and changing the environment as a result of the consequence of your behavior janab aap ne environment pe kuch environment mein kuch change lay and it was because of this change certain consequence was there and if this consequence has to be maintained and sustained it has to be rewarded a reinforcer has to be there so jab hum ye chahte hain ki frequency of a behavior should increase we should reinforce it we should reward it so there should be positive reinforcement there should be negative reinforcement for it if we want the frequency of a response to be increased ji main bilkul yahi keh rahi hu ki agar hum chahte hain ki ek frequency of response badhe ek frequency of behavior badhe to positive ya negative reinforcement istemal karni hai aur agar main chahti hu ki ek undesirable behavior decrease ho aur uski frequency kam ho so then i am going to use either extinction principle or punishment principle so or aversion stimulus so th- this would be something else now we are talking about skinner's theory of personality and skinner's concept of operant conditioning now before moving on to skinner's concept it was basically thorndike who used hungry cats in a typically designed box and the cats have to perform a number of behaviors in order to get out of these puzzle boxes and to get a piece of fish or meat so soon the cats learn soon these hungry cats learn what behaviors they have to perform in order to get out of the puzzle box and to get satiated to get that piece of meat or fish bilkul wo meat or fish jo hai wo reinforcement hai now this was this particular thing or this particular series of experiments with thorndike design led him to formulate his law of effect so what is this law of effect thorndike formulated his law of effect number 1 those behaviors are more likely to be repeated that lead to satisfying consequences when behaviors are rewarded they are reinforced number 2 those behaviors are likely to be repeated if they lead to unsatisfying consequences when behaviors are punished they are not reinforced so rewards and punishments mold the behavior of animals as well as humans teachers judges employers they make use of the connection between actions and consequences to shape behavior this technique of shaping or successive approximations will be discussed later in detail example you are hungry and ice cream can be a reinforcement but if you have a common cold or you do not like ice cream it can be a punishment skinner discovered many reinforcement strategies for increasing frequencies of behavior positive reinforcement negative reinforcement dear students we are talking to you about operant conditioning aur humne aapse ye kaha ke operant conditioning is where an organism or individual operates on the environment changes it and as a result of this consequence this consequence or behavior has to be reinforced if the frequency of behavior is to be increased we got to reinforce it if the frequency of a behavior is to decrease we we do not have to reinforce it 
Now it was basically Thorndike who threw his experiments in the puzzle box with his hungry cats formulated his law of effect jisme usne kaha ke those behaviors which we want their frequency to increase we should reinforce them aur wo behaviors which are undesirable jinki frequency hum increase nahi karna chahte unko hum reinforce na kare this was law of effect now based on this same principle it is teachers and employers and parents they use the same strategy and technique which thorndike and skinner use that is reinforce a behavior which is desirable do not reinforce a behavior which is not desirable a student who is bringing in a result card with a straight a's reinforce it reward it a student who is using abusive language do not reward it at times punish it dear students today we began talking with you about skinner's theory of personality janab humne usme bahut detail mein aapke sath baat ki classical conditioning ki operant conditioning ki we are still on operant conditioning we have to discuss many core concepts related to operant conditioning of course with examples it's a very interesting theory it is related with program teaching it is related with uh, something which students will, will enjoy more please go through the powerpoint slides and the word document that is available on the web page of personality psychology do write to us we will certainly respond to your queries hope to see you in our next lecture please take very good care of yourself up till then it is khuda hafiz